Multi-stage events is the heading and I want to quickly review with you that when it comes to an event that has more than one stage or more than one component to it, for instance, you know, um, someone flips a coin three times, that's got three stages, each coin flip is its own stage, but we consider everything together. When it comes to multi-stage events, there's really only one question that needs to be fundamentally answered, which is when you combine said stages together and answer whatever question it is that you're being asked, do you add the probabilities or do you multiply the probabilities or what combination of each of those do you do? So let's actually use that example I just said, um, three coin tosses. If we represent this diagrammatically, and quick question for you, what do you think would be the diagram of choice? You've got a few to choose from. If you were doing three coin flips in a row, any suggestions? Yeah, I reckon a tree diagram is the way to go. Um, dot diagrams are often very useful. Once you go to that third stage, you're like, where's it? Where's it gonna? Where's the third thing going to go? Okay, you don't want a three-dimensional dot diagram that would be a pain. So let's all quickly just draw um, the tree diagram, which would correspond to three successive coin flips. So, for instance, you've got the first set where you could either land a head or a tail. And then you're going to get this happening, well, you'll get it happening again, right? After you first flip, your second flip is going to look, is that going to be big enough something? Yeah, that'll be. It's going to look exactly the same, except it could happen again based on whether you've got a head or a tail, and it just kind of keeps on breaking off, right? Now, we've got only two coin flips on here at the moment, so I need my third set, which is why, sorry, I told you this is why I was being a bit lazy. Let me see if this will line up nicely for me. I bet it won't, but I'll try. I've got now my third set here. Oh yeah, that works. Yay, epic laziness, okay. Um, now, you can see what our final sample space is here over on the right hand side, yeah? I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 total outcomes at the end, which shouldn't be surprising because each time uh, it splits into two, it bifurcates. So you've got 2, 2 squared, 2 cubed, that's why you've got 8 total possibilities. Okay. Now, this is a tree diagram, it's not a probability tree diagram because I haven't labelled any of the branches with their actual values. Can anyone tell me why in this case it's probably not worth it? Why is it not worth actually labeling with the individual probabilities? In this case. Uh, okay, well number one, you know, the, cal the numbers are going to be quite easy to calculate. Hello, who are you looking for? Um, Erica has a lunch attention. <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> Isn't that nice and personalized? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay, so let's rewind. So, not only have you got fairly simple numbers to work with, I would say if you add numbers on here, by the way, they're all just going to be a half in this case, right? They're all going to be a half. Um, you're adding information which doesn't actually get you toward solving the question needs here. And so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay. Now, what will be the probability of, well, let me give you a particular example. What will be the probability of flipping the same side, I'm not going to say which side, but flipping the same side three times, all of the times, in a row? What will be the probability of flipping the same side all three times in a row? Well, the first thing we'll do is we can say, on this diagram, I can highlight the parts which satisfy the uh, conditions that I want, right? So, for example, over here, head, head, head. There you go. That's one of them that will meet the requirements. And I didn't specify which face, which side, so I could also have... Yeah, very good. Tail, tail, tail. There we go. So, I want to work out the probabilities of each of those and then I need to include both of them. Okay. So, now when I say, I'll write just the ones that are relevant for me, half, a half, a half. In what way, addition or multiplication, am I, going to make it, am I going to combine these probabilities to get this probability at the end? Yeah, when I go from left to right across my probability tree, across my tree diagram I should say, I will multiply. So, I'm going to, just to make that really obvious and for all of you, I'd like you to do the same. Even though, of course, we know what a half times a half times a half is equal to. I want to write that down just to communicate to you where my answer, which of course is an eighth, where it comes from. Okay? So, going from left to right, I am multiplying. But then when I have a look at this guy down here, which naturally has exactly the same probability, right here, I now have these two numbers, an eighth 
and an eighth. In this case, they are the same because everything is equal chance, but of course they don't have to be in a different situation. How am I going to combine these two probabilities together? Will I use addition or multiplication? And in this case, I'm going to add them. So when I add an eight and an eight, that gives me the actual probability that I want, which is a quarter. Okay. Now, I use this as a very simple example because it's so intuitive and the numbers are so easy to work with that you yourself can clearly see why it must be addition one way and multiplication the other. For instance, suppose I got it mixed up in my head and I thought, oh, do I, do I add as I go from left to right? Well, if you think about that first one we're trying to work out, this green one up here, what's the probability of flipping heads three times in a row? Um, you quickly get something nonsensical if you confuse which one is which. If you try to add them, then when you add, you get a half, plus a half, plus a half. It's like, oh wow, I have a 150% chance of flipping heads three times in a row. Something is part of the pun, not adding up. So you can see if you're ever uncertain about whether it's addition or multiplication, then think about an example which is easy for you to work with, and it's, it's obvious to you which one it's going to be and when. Okay? So frequently in multi-stage events, you're going to have to use both addition and multiplication, and you just need to know when. Does that make sense?